Oh, psych. <laughs> Friends, Eric Andre is your guitar sage here for another Your Guitar Sage Reacts video. This is where I read your comments from last week's Your Guitar Sage Reacts video, which was, which was, what is your favorite era of music and why? So without further ado, we're gonna get into this. Okay, what is your favorite era of music and why? So I'm gonna answer this one myself and I've really analyzed this. I've gone through different phases in my life where I've liked different uh, eras of music. I mean, there was a, in the 90s, I was listening to the, to the 50s a ton. I mean, just an absolute ton. Obviously the 80s, I was into the 80s. Um, every genre of music from about the 20s on and then obviously classical and baroque and a lot of that stuff I was listening to as well. So uh, I've gone through different phases uh, different phases of liking these different genres and different eras of music, but I, I would have to say if gun held to my head, I had to make a choice, I would say the 60s because that produced the Beatles and it produced Pink Floyd and some of my favorite bands, uh, Led Zeppelin, uh, some of my favorite bands of all times, Hendrix and the list goes on and on and just some really, really uh, emotional music there use, using some chords outside of diet, standard diatonic harmony like I talk about all the time, borrowed chords and what have you. So that I'm going to have to say if I have to pick one, that's going to be my favorite. But the 70s and the, and the 50s and the 80s and everything else is so closely behind that it's, it's almost not even worth mentioning. But that's my official uh, my official era that I like the best of the 60s. All right, so without further ado, I've got my monitor here in front of me and I'm going to be reading these comments and I'm doing something new too, by the way, my friends. So, you know, last time we had 456 comments, something like that. Um, this time we don't have as many, that's all right, maybe not as intriguing of a question, but it's a question that I wanna know from you guys anyhow. But what I am gonna be doing this time differently, okay, so tell your friends, tell your family to like your comment if you want it to pop up to the top. And the reason I'm doing that is uh, I've already, I'm, I'm seeing that, I mean, even 125 comments is a lot to go through. So I'm gonna pick the ones that folks are chatting about most first, okay? The ones that have the most replies, the ones that have um, the most likes and that sort of thing, okay? All right, so for Racing Dragon 13, he says, uh, for me, the era of the era of music was the 60s. It was really a cool blend of when music was starting to change and experiment. I agree with that. That it was really like the 50s were almost like the 80s in that they were kind of safe, but like great melodies, like killer melodies. And uh, same thing, there was like a, a kickback with the 90s with grunge and everything else. It was like, screw it, we're breaking the rules. And that's what happened with the 60s. The 50s, it was like all in a nice little box, you know. Every day it's getting stronger, you know, and all the melodies were just perfect and succinct and what have you. And the 60s was like coming in saying, no, we're changing things, you know. A lot of blues, rock, country, old school blues, heavy rock uh, going on almost endless with bands like uh, Cream, Led Zeppelin, The Who's, Stones. Oh, I mentioned, I forgot to mention them, one of my favorite bands, The Stones, Beatles, Hendrix, Pink Floyd, CCR, and, and you know, the, the list goes on. So Raging Dragon, you and I uh, could get along. The Doors, ah, I forgot The Doors, one of my favorites as well. So you can see there, and I just sang a Buddy Holly tune as well. As well. So um, he mentioned them as well. So killer tunes out of the 60s. If you haven't delved into the 60s, my friends, do it. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jovan Ortiz is saying the 70s because Pink Floyd, Eagles, and Queen. And there you go, Queen. I forgot the I forgot Queen. Uh, my gosh, just such great bands. Uh, Mike Norton saying 80s and 90s punk rock, Social Distortion, Bad Religion, Rancid, Pennywise, Love Rancid. Uh, a lot of those bands I love. I was I was a skater, and there was something about older punk and skaters that kind of went together like peanut butter and jelly. Agreed. And I too, Mike was a skater in the 90s and still am. I, I just, I mean, I just got that one wheel and I've got my my long board and I, so I'm, I've got rollerblades and I am was always on wheels as a kid and still am. <laughs> Nothing's stopping me. All right, uh, Kika Lunas, 7449, is saying summer of 67 was so memorable for me. Uh, in fact, I think they call that the summer of love 
which is like just look it up online. It was just a moment in time where music was just magical. And the swing in the 60s was an incredible time for the music industry. This industry, the era will go down as a moment in history when music changed our lives and our culture. It's true, my friends. I know the younger folks, uh, millennials and that sort of thing that are watching this, you're like, well, what was so special about it? Dude, it was a special time. I wasn't even alive at that time, but it was a special time. You go back and you look at old videos of that and it was remarkable, just a remarkable time. Um, when young people found the way to be noticed, to identify themselves and let their voices be heard, expressed through rock and roll, Motown, the whole nine yards. I won't keep going because this one's fairly long, but name some great artists. You know, this is a great place to look too. If you're looking for new music, this weblog right here, this video right here, look at what other people are mentioning. You're going to see names come up over and over and over again. So if you're wanting a nice education in the 60s and the 70s and just find some insane music. I mean, Pink Floyd alone is uh, topping some what even some of my favorite bands are doing now, Radiohead and that sort of thing. And I go back to I go back to Pink Floyd and I'm like those guys were just it was just a whole nother whole nother way of thinking. Uh, Peter, the 60s, you had the Beatles, Stones, The Who, The Doors, Beach Boys, Jimi Hendrix. Again, um, yeah, that was Peter Harris that said that. Uh, Edwin McLaughlin saying, one year, 1967, nothing approaches it in depth and range of classic numbers. 100% true. I believe it. I was born in 69, so a couple years later, wasn't even alive for this time. But but uh, amazing, you know, amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, okay. Uh, William Mark Swanson saying, definitely the 70s, that's what I call music. Here's Jason Lewis saying, my first CD, Pink Floyd's The Wall, oh my God, M literally my favorite CD of all times. I don't think anything's going to come close to it. There's a few things that are, that are Desert Island Discs, but The Wall, listen to that sucker from beginning to end, put some headphones on, give yourself a couple hours and maybe an hour to recover. You will never be the same again. Do it. That's my prescription for you. It's the doctor's prescription for you today, okay? Uh, the Lick on Wish You Were Here. After that, it had to be Eruption uh, by Van Halen, right? Always seemed to come back to the 70s. Fleetwood Mac, Lindsey Buckingham. While not necessarily heavy on guitar, Billy Joel's music is a happy place, especially from the, six, from the 70s. Uh, Dave, just Dave, is saying the 70s, man. Uh, some of the greatest guitarists to pick up the axe came out of the 70s. He agreed. Uh, Gilmore... Tony Iommi, a lot of these guys are going from 60s to 70s as well. So uh, Pink Floyd, um, I think I think The Wall might have been recorded. Well, I won't even say because if I'm 10 years off, that would be really, really bad. But I think, yeah, I won't even say it. Um, but nonetheless, some great, amazing players out of the 70s as well. Robert Talbert saying 70s and 80s uh, from Van Halen to Stevie Ray Vaughan, Joe Walsh, Jimmy Page. Uh, Richard Humphreys, after viewing Willie Nelson, Merle Haggard, and especially the great guitarist Vince Gill, inspired by the way I've uh, another for another day my Vince Gill story inspired me enough long uh, enough along with my uncle who could play some awesome country songs. Indeed, great great players. Fifties to eighties, I would have to agree. Ashwin R O G is saying Nirvana changed my life though. Man, is there not an artist? or a song that's changed your life, that should be my next one, is, is what song uh, changed your life or what artist changed your life. There always is something, right, where you're just in the moment and someone spoke to you through those speakers like you've never been spoken to before, right? It's just like spiritual, if you will. Um, I agree with you, my friend. Joe Hensley, I just caught up with this one, pretty uh, eclectic about music. I really don't have a favorite ear or even have a favorite style of music except for disco. I can't stand disco. And I love it all and I want to learn everything I can. Never want to be nailed down to one style. The world is filled with music. Why be pigeonholed into one style or era? Agreed, Joe. And friends, listen to that. That is words of wisdom right there. It's like, don't be pigeonholed into one style of music. There is so much to be pulled from every style of music. Hell, even disco is one of, I mean, ABBA and uh, Bee Gees are some of my favorite bands of all times. And they had hit after hit after hit, and that was disco. Uh, but I know what you're talking about. I think I know the disco you're talking about, Joe. <laughs> uh, so there's so there's amazing music out there in all different genres and all 
different eras. So dig in. Don't be afraid of checking checking it all out. Brian uh, Bianco is saying, isn't it crazy that the British invasion had to introduce the U.S. to their own blues legends in the 50s, 60s, and 70s? Music brings everything together 100%. 100%. Eddie Connor saying, my favorite time, 1962. I saw some great groups in the clubs in Liverpool. Didn't didn't see the Beatles. Uh, didn't want to, but Chuck Berry... Uh, little Richard, Johnny, uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, the Rolling Stones, to name a few, but I was lucky enough to see them all. Eddie in Liverpool. Love it. Thank you, Eddie Connor. Um, beautiful. Uh, Do Monkeys saying, I love the 70s classic era. Uh, my time, Mick the Painter saying 72 to 82. Uh, I hear somebody saying, Nathan Guzman saying the 80s. You know, man, they're saying, oh, look at this. Although I like music from the 30s, 40s, and 50s, so if somebody's listened to the 30s and 40s, nice, that's the first mention there. Uh, 60s till about 76, the pounding rhythm of 60s rock matched my own frenetic libido. <laughs> Love that. It's true. Uh, man, it's like they say that there's some, your, your frontal cortex does not fully develop until you're like in your early 20s, which is why people are always razzing teenagers and, and young 20-year-olds uh, for doing stupid things. Uh, it's just that that part of their brain has not quite developed yet. But the cool thing about that is that they produce this, these really creative bits and they're not in a cage as what happens when you get older sometimes. You start thinking more stifled. Um, so yes, frenetic libido. I love that in your 60s and when you're going through that and hormones are racing and everything, you're like, ah! It's, everything is magical. So um, I love it. Six Riddler Six wrote that one. My friends, great stuff in here. Um, I love this idea of I'm going to go with the ones that are that that pop to the top, okay? I'm going to start do, searching on these by top comments, okay? So from now on, if you want to get your stuff to the top, uh, well, it would be helpful if you checked a few others that you see other people doing. So um, that's going to be it for this question, but but let's talk about that for just one moment. As I'm doing these, if you see other ones that speak to you, go ahead and hit thumbs up because that's going to help them pop up to the top as well. And it's going to mean that that question, chances are, is going to have a better um, a better chance of being answered or, or being reacted to. Uh, because you're giving it love. Um, also, replying to and and thumbs up will will make those rise to the top. And those are chances chances are the ones that are going to be reflective of the whole bunch where everybody is resonating with that as well. So do that for this next question, okay? And the next question is, you ready for it? Here it is. What hurdle have you come across on the guitar that seemed impossible? But that you over that you overcome, that you overcame, I should say, and how? Let's let's make this a little bit more succinct. What hurdle have you overcome on the guitar that seemed impossible? And then how did you overcome it? Okay, so it's like a three-part question there. What was the hurdle? It has to be it has to be one that seemed impossible. What was the hurdle? And how did you overcome it? I should say it's a two-part question. That's what I want you to do in this video, my friends. Leave those comments be below. And as you're reading those comments, and, and here's, a, here's something else I want you to do. This is the other reason why I'm doing this, is because, dear God, it's not all about me. Like, like Tony Robbins says, I'm not your guru. You're, you're your guru, right? He's like, you help yourself. I can just kind of lead you there. But there's so much power. And we're, for, for those millennials that are just here, you know, it's like this is all you're used to. But for us older folks that were, we didn't have this before, there's so much power in the community. So leaving these comments is helping so many people out because they can read, oh, wow. So this guy had a hard time with bar chords and he got through it. Wow. Hmm. Maybe there is help for me. Literally, your words of encouragement will help thousands and thousands and thousands of people. That's how I got my start here on YouTube is I just would create a video and upload it just to help people out. And then all of a sudden, it, it when I say all of a sudden, over years, it got bigger and then there were books and courses and everything else. But bottom line, I started off by just uploading content because I loved the guitar and I love 
beings. I love kind beings. I don't want to help people. So your words are helpful. Trust me. They're is equally as helpful as my videos. So please leave those comments below here. Tell folks what was impossible for you in the beginning that you didn't think you could overcome, an obstacle, and then how did you overcome it? Leave those comments below. This might be the best one. I, I'm sure we're going to have other ones that are fantastic, but out of the three that we've done so far, this is going to be the one that's going to help the most people. So don't be shy, my friends. Share that wisdom. Dispel that wisdom. You literally are going to be helping other people. And the more thumbs up those video, those comments get, you're going to see that, um, that it's helping that many more people out. All right, my friends, until next time, I'm Eric Andreas, your Guitar Sage with Your, your Guitar Sage Reacts. I love love that we're doing this. You guys are champs and I'll see you in the next video.